This video explains the reference method used to determine the moisture content of grains, based on ISO 712, as well as the recommended laboratory procedures. The Laboratory and Research section of KET Electric Laboratory maintains a variety of test equipment and analyzers used to obtain accurate measurement results. This laboratory works with a wide variety of agricultural products from Japan and around the world. On a daily basis, experiments for data acquisition and examinations of measuring instruments are conducted here using these samples, and these activities form a foundation that enables us to maintain the highest levels of reliability for our measurement instruments. The method for measuring moisture content, as adopted as a standard method by an international organization or an equivalent body, is called a reference method. In this video, we will explain a reference method based on ISO 712, in which a sample is dried at a high temperature. This method, also called the oven drying method, is widely used around the world because of its simplicity as well as its ability to directly and absolutely determine moisture content. ISO 712 is suitable for cereal grains such as wheat and rice, but not for larger items such as maize or beans. In the reference method, the apparent moisture content changes according to the drying conditions. This is because materials other than water also evaporate under high drying temperatures and long drying times. In general, as the temperature increases or the time is extended, the apparent moisture content tends to increase. To obtain reliable measurement results, the drying conditions are strictly defined. However, these conditions are not standardized internationally. This table shows the major reference methods and their different drying conditions. This is a flow chart of the drying method. A sufficient quantity of a conditioned sample is prepared. A small test portion is taken from the sample, then ground and dried in an oven. The moisture content is determined based on the change in its mass from before to after drying. The rest of the sample is used as a reference sample for calibrating the moisture meters. Laboratory preparation is an important part of providing appropriate test conditions. The laboratory should be kept at a constant temperature and humidity, using an air conditioner that does not produce strong airflow. The recommended room temperature is 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, with a relative humidity of 50 to 60 percent. This room should also be equipped with a power supply sufficient for heating the oven. The oven is the most important piece of equipment for drying samples. It must have sufficient internal space as well as stable uniform temperature, good ventilation, and the ability to quickly return to the set temperature after the door is opened. The oven is heated to 130 degrees Celsius one hour before the experiment and its internal temperature is allowed to stabilize. The performance of the grinding mill has a significant impact on the results of the moisture content measurement because the mill comes into direct contact with the sample. It must have the following characteristics. It must not absorb or generate moisture. It must not generate heat. And it must have a closed structure that enables easy cleaning. In addition, the laboratory will need an analytical balance a desiccator, sample cans with lids, cotton gloves, and spoons. The balance must have a resolution of one milligram or finer, and it must be placed on a stable table in a place away from vibrations. The cans and lids should be numbered so that they can consistently be used as the same sets. Reference samples of cereal grains are used for a variety of purposes, including calibrating moisture meters. Specify the target area for controlling moisture meters. Collect a sufficient amount of a typical cereal grain grown in the country or region where the moisture meters are to be operated. 
For our demonstration, we will use typical Japanese rice, still in the husk. When using samples for moisture measurements, divide the collected samples, dry them to different degrees, and prepare samples with different moisture contents. Here, drying is the primary method for adjusting moisture. However, when necessary, you may also artificially moisten the samples under a highly humid environment in a sealed container. To do so, fill the bottom part of a container with water, lay the samples on a mesh placed above the water, and close the container's lid. Leave it with the lid closed until the moisture content of the samples reaches the desired value. After moisture adjustment, select a group of samples to be measured, with moisture contents varying from 9 to 15 percent. These samples should then be sealed in thick plastic bags, labeled, and stored in a refrigerator. Use the analytical balance to weigh the mass of each empty sample can with this lid and round the results to the nearest milligram. This value is to be used as the tear value for weighing the sample. Additionally, do not dip samples into water to moisten them. Do not freeze samples for storage. Do not open sample bags immediately after taking them out of the refrigerator. Do not use thin sample bags. Do not use a sample can with a lid other than the one prepared for it. This is the flowchart for grinding and preconditioning. If the initial particle size of the selected sample is larger than ISO 712 specifications, grind the sample. In addition, if the initial moisture content is not between 9% and 15%, precondition the sample for proper grinding. Otherwise, skip preconditioning and move on to the drying procedure. For this example, the sample will require both grinding and preconditioning. For preconditioning, pre-dry the sample for a short time in an oven at 130 degrees Celsius. Before preconditioning, mix the sample in the bag. Take out two test portions of slightly more than 5 gram each, put them into the sample cans, and close the lids. Use the analytical balance to weigh the mass of each test portion with its lid and round the results to the nearest milligram. Remove the lids from all sample cans, open the oven door, and arrange the cans in the center of the middle oven rack. Place the lids under or near the cans in the oven. Close the oven door and let the internal temperature return to 130 degrees Celsius, then dry the sample cans for 7 to 10 minutes. Open the oven door, take out the sample cans, and let them rest in the room with their lids off for at least 2 hours. This process brings the moisture content of the test portions below 15%. Once the sample cans have cooled, put their lids back on, weigh the mass of each closed can using the analytical balance, and round the results to the nearest milligram. This procedure must be completed just before grinding the samples. Do not leave the sample bag open. Additionally, bear in mind that if you forget to weigh a sample or spill a sample, you must start the whole procedure over. Be careful. This is the main procedure of the drying method. Mix the selected samples in the bags. Take two 5-gram test portions from each sample bag, put the portions into sample cans with known tear weights, and close the lids quickly. If there are preconditioned sample cans, add them to this group. Grind all test portions in the sample cans using the grinding mill, return them to their cans, and close the lids quickly. To avoid contamination by mixing samples, use a brush to clean the mill after grinding each portion. Use the analytical balance to weigh the mass of each sample can with the lid closed, with its ground sample inside, 
and round the results to the nearest milligram. Remove the lids from all sample cans. Open the oven door and arrange the sample cans in the center of the middle oven rack. Place the lids under or near the cans inside the oven. Close the oven door and let the internal temperature return to 130 degrees Celsius. Then dry the sample cans for two hours. After two hours have elapsed, open the oven door and use cotton gloves to close the lids of all sample cans still inside the oven. Then, remove the closed cans from the oven, put them into the desiccator, and allow them to cool with the desiccator lid closed. When the sample cans have cooled sufficiently, remove the cans from the desiccator with their lids still closed, one by one. Use the analytical balance to weigh the mass of each sample can, including the test portion and the lid, and round the results to the nearest milligram. Additionally, heed these precautions during the drying process. Under ISO 712, moisture content is calculated on a wet basis. Formulas are shown below for with and without preconditioning. In these formulas, W0 and W1 are the masses of the test portion before and after drying, and W2 and W3 are the masses of the test portion before and after preconditioning, respectively. Moisture contents are generally calculated on a computer using a worksheet. In this way, we have used the reference method to determine the moisture contents of reference samples. These can now be utilized as reference samples with the predetermined moisture values to calibrate various moisture meters. These samples should be sealed in polyethylene bags and carefully stored in a refrigerator to prevent any changes in their moisture contents. The traceability system established through this reference method plays an important role in maintaining the accuracy and reliability of moisture meters. For many years, KET Electric Laboratory has collected reference samples and performed the reference method to maintain accuracy in moisture measurements. These efforts have long contributed to our product's consistent reliability.